the National Day of Writing is coming up this Friday on October 20th. And so I wanted to share a history video about technical writing on Unix. And I've done videos like this occasionally on this channel, uh, but this is going to show up as an article on technicallywewrite.com. But I also wanted to share it here too, because I think it's an interesting history of computing. And so when Unix was new, uh, the standard way to write documentation was with a text formatting program called NROF, and that stood for New ROF, because it was an updated version of another program called ROF, which itself uh, was an implementation of the runoff text processing system. And so here I'm using a system called uh, Cool Retro Term that will emulate running on an old uh, Unix terminal. And this is something similar that they might have had in the earlier days of Unix, although the very, very early days of Unix would have used what's called a teletype, which is across a uh, big paper printer. Uh, and we'll see an example of that coming up. Uh, first of all, let's, let's edit a file here and we can look at how you might display certain files in NROF. And so uh, the only editor you really had in those early days of Unix uh, wasn't VI. It was well before VI. It was actually a, a line editor called Ed. So let's go ahead and first of all uh, verify we don't have anything in this in this directory. So everything's going to be a new file. And so I'll start a file called uh, we'll do Ed on a new file called uh, Story. And the default is that Ed does not display a prompt. Uh, the modern version of Ed, you can choose to display a prompt. But here I'm just going to show it kind of in the original Unix style uh, with no prompt. And you're just inserting commands, kind of what I would describe as sort of into the air. Uh, so let's uh, let, let's write a little description here about, um, you know, NROF. Uh, and so we'll say, uh, we'll do an I and that'll insert uh, text. Uh, and since we don't have any uh, content here, it'll just start inserting text at the beginning of the file. And so we'll say a, uh, a text processing uh, system uh, like NROF uh, collects words uh, and it fills paragraphs. Uh, that means that individual words get read from the uh, input and the program fills out uh, paragraphs. And if you were using NROF, uh, and you can do this today, uh, you would use these uh, special dot commands to get any kind of formatting that you wanted. So if I wanted to add, for example, a blank line in here, that's a, a spacer line. So dot SP would add some extra vertical space. And uh, the default, if you don't give it an option, is it'll add one line of space. But let's let's be very uh, uh, clear on that. We'll just do sp1. It's the same as just doing .sp. But here we'll do .sp1. And that will add an extra uh, uh, blank line. And now I can type another paragraph and say, uh, and with uh, NROF, uh, you can also use these uh, special codes uh, to indicate uh, formatting, like uh, adding uh, space. Uh, changing the margins and centering uh, text. And so I just wanted to provide a little bit of uh, text here just to generate two distinct uh, paragraphs. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there in terms of the, uh, the, the text. Uh, I'm going to hit return. And then because we're still inserting text, the way that you tell Ed that you're done inserting is you just put a dot on a line on its own and I'll hit return. And now we're out of insert mode. There's nothing to tell you they're out of insert mode, but you are out of insert mode. And so now we can look at the contents of the file. And one thing we can do is we can say, uh, starting at line one, uh, going to the end of the file, which a uh, special indicator for that is dollar sign. And we can uh, print out uh, the contents of each line. And that will print out now the full contents of my file. Uh, if I wanted to number that, I could do one comma dollar and then N, and that would put a number on each line and a tab. So that way I can see uh, what line is what. Uh, by the way, you don't actually have to use one comma dollar all the time. A shorthand for that is percent. And then we can do percent P and that'll print out all the, uh, the lines of my file. And so you can see all the lines of my file are right there. All right, let's not lose the work that we've done. So let's go ahead and write it back to the disk with the W command. And since I'm done, and that tells you it's written 311 bytes. And so uh, now we can uh, quit back to the, uh, uh, to the shell. And so we'll do Q. 
And so now we've quit the ed editor. Now let's let's pr uh, process this with NROF. And so I'm going to switch to a terminal that's meant to emulate a kind of old typewriter uh, style terminal called the teletype. And this terminal I've defined to be 80 columns wide because a normal US letter page would be uh, like on a typewriter would be 80 columns wide. And this terminal is also defined as 67 lines long. Now a US letter page uh, would typically be 66 lines long. It's typically what a, a printer would generate. Uh, but this way, when I process things, uh, it will generate 66 lines of output. And so with 67 lines on the terminal, you can at least see the top <laughs> line of my output and it, and it won't roll off uh, the first line. So we can see the whole file uh, by, by processing it. And so let's go ahead and, and uh, process my file with NROF. Uh, and so we can uh, just do an LS. Now you won't be able to see this very well in the video, but that's okay. The whole point is to kind of look at the overall structure of what this uh, document might look like. And so uh, now I can run NROF on the file uh, story. And uh, there it is. It's now generated uh, the uh, a document. It's 66 lines long. Now everything is, is uh, mushed up to the left hand side of the page and it's actually the top of the page as well. And if we wanted to, we could uh, add some other macros to kind of make this look a little bit better. And so just a, a simple introduction to that without getting too far into the weeds. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my uh, regular video terminal and let's uh, edit a new file called page. And so uh, just to kind of remind ourselves what we have, we only have the one file called story. So let's edit a new file called page. It doesn't exist, so we can go to start inserting. Now we can uh, insert some NROF commands to actually provide uh, some uh, uh, some space for us. So let's go and do, uh, we'll, uh, do uh, 11 lines or six lines of space at the top. And that should be uh, one inch because there's uh, it's 11 inches tall and there's 66 lines and so that's easy math and so it should be six lines to an inch and so we're going to add uh, dot sp of six lines and i want to um, make my my text kind of fit in the middle with a left and a right margin and so to do that i need to remember that uh, every uh, u.s letter page has 80 columns in it and so if i define the uh, the document itself is having, let's say, 60 lines, just to make my math easy, I can define a line length dot LL of 60 because 80 columns minus 60 is 20. And so if I want 10 on the left and 10 on the right, that gives me a 10 uh, column uh, margin on the left and the right, which is close to an inch. And so now I need to add a page offset dot PO of 10, and that will put a 10 column margin on the left hand side of my document. And uh, now we can go ahead and, and finish our insert with a dot and then we can uh, write that back to disk. And I'm going to quit back to the operating system and let's switch back to my teletype. We can actually process this. And so now that I process it uh, one more time, uh, you can see that uh, it'll have an inch on the top. It'll have an inch on the approximately an inch on the left and right. And so we'll do NROF on uh, my page file and then my story document. And so here you can see that now it's added about an inch uh, at the top and it's got it at about an inch, 10 columns on the left and the right. And you could also do some other things like add some, uh, uh, some spacing between the paragraphs like I've got there. I've got, I've got one line of space, but maybe I also want to do like uh, an indented paragraph. And so I could create another file, uh, which I'm going to do here to remind ourselves what files we have. And so I'm going to create a new one. Uh, so we'll do uh, add and we'll do this one as uh, PP because I'm going to define a macro called PP that will uh, do an, a regular paragraph. So PP is kind of short for paragraph. Uh, and so uh, no, no contents in there yet. So we'll do an insert. And so now we can define a macro and you do it with the dot DE command. And then you tell it what the macro name should be. And in this case, it'll be PP. There is no command PP. And so I, this is a, a new macro that I'm creating. And what this is going to do is uh, we were doing before a dot SP one that adds a one uh, blank line of space between my paragraphs. And then we also want to do a temporary indent. So we'll do a dot 
ti of uh, let's, let's say like four columns four blank spaces and then i'm done with my definition of the pp command there's other stuff i could probably do uh but we'll just leave it at that we'll just leave it with a blank line between each one and we'll do a temporary indent and then we'll end the macro definition with dot dot now i'm still in insert mode in ed so i need to tell ed that i'm done and so i'm going to do just a regular dot and that'll tell ed that i'm done doing the insert remember there's nothing to tell you that it's done <laughs> inserting text you just have to know that you are done inserting text and if i were to print out the contents of my file so all lines uh with the percent and then p and there you can see i've just got four lines in my file let's go ahead and save that and quit and let's uh before i I process this through NROF. Let's edit my story file. So remind ourselves our files and let's edit our story file. And let's, uh, let's print that out here. So we remind ourselves what's in here. And uh, at line one, I actually want to insert the PP instruction that I just made. So we're going to do, uh, starting at line one, we're going to insert some text and I'm going to insert dot PP. I'm done inserting. I can add extra lines there if I needed to, but I only wanted to add the .pp instruction. So we'll finish inserting with the dot and then we'll remind ourselves what we have. So let's to look at uh, all of our lines of our file. We'll just number them out. And so now I want to change that .sp1 there. It's on line six and I want to make it another .pp instruction. There's a couple of different ways I could do that. Uh, I could, uh, for example, um, I could just go in and, and on line six, I could change it with a C instruction, and that would allow me to type in a new line uh, to replace line six. Uh, there's actually another way I can do this as well. And so if I said that I, I could replace uh, any instructions with uh, another instruction. And since there's only one line long, this is probably a, a good case for the S command. Now here I've only got a nine line file. I just added the dot PP at the top. And so, you know, I could just replace one line, but let's give it a longer file and you wanted to change all instances of .sp1 to be a .pp macro. Well, then I could say I could uh, start, let's say I could start and end anywhere. I could also do the entire file of percent, but let's just show you how you can uh, have things start and end on a, a whatever specific lines. Uh, let's, let's say we're gonna start on line four which is a couple lines above the .sp1. And we're gonna end on line eight, and that's just a couple of lines below my .sp1. And then I'm going to swap some text. And then we need to do a slash, and that says anything between this slash and another slash is the text I want to find so I can replace it. This is basically a find and replace. And so here we're gonna look for a, a beginning of a line. So the, little carrot symbol and then uh, a literal dot which you need to protect so you need to do a backslash dot and that'll protect it so otherwise a dot will just represent any character which could also be a dot but we're going to be very uh, specific here and we're going to say uh, a, a, a beginning of the line dot sp1 and then another slash and that says all right so anytime anytime i find a uh, at the beginning of a line dot sp1 that's the the text i'm going to match so i can change it to something else and now between this slash and the next slash is the text that i'm going to replace it with and so in this case i'm going to replace it with dot pp and then my slash and that says now i'm done making the uh, search and replace and if i hit return it will now change all instances of dot sp1 uh, starting at line four ending at line eight I only have one instance of line six. Uh, and so it will really effectively only change uh, line six. And so let's go ahead and, and look at all of our uh, file and we'll number out the lines. And we should see that line six is the only one that changed. And so now I've got a dot PP instruction in front of each paragraph. And so that's what I want to have happen. And so if I write that out to disk and then quit back to my shell, uh, reminding ourselves what we have. So we've got a file in here. So I'm going to use the cat command that will display the contents of a file, it concatenate the contents of files. Uh, and the PP instruction, or the PP file has my definition of a PP macro, and the page file has uh, the uh, sort of the page setup, where it's gonna add an inch at the top, and it's gonna add, uh, define my line length of being 60 and my page offset on the left-hand side of 10, which leaves 10 on the right-hand side. And now if I were to switch back to my teletype, and process that one more time. 
with nrof in any order, I can say, look, I'm going to define my page and then I'm going to uh, recognize the PP macros and then I'm going to process the story file. And now when I hit return, we should still see the same inch margins all around, uh, but we're going to have a temporary indent on each one of my paragraphs. The first paragraph will also go down by one line. And there it is. So you can see that that's uh, how uh, technical writers would use NROF uh, in the early days of Unix when really teletype was the only way that you could generate uh, text on a printed document. Teletype was a typewriter-like device. Uh, it was also very noisy, a little slow, but the equivalent uh, that you might remember is uh, dot matrix printers. So it's kind of similar uh, to that. Uh, being able to use TROF to generate um, typesetter output with nice fonts didn't happen until much later. And GROF is the GNU version of, of that, which would uh, also print that out to, uh, for example, uh, PostScript printers. And so uh, that's sort of my, my quick history on a little bit of uh, early days of uh, technical writing. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.